We're going to talk about the mystery of praying in tongues. The mystery of praying in tongues. And uh, one of the reasons I'm, I'm, I want to share it with you is because tongues is your power source. It actually releases the power of God through you. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Now, for those of you, again, I want to make sure you understand something, that what you heard and demonstrated this morning is actually a manifestation of the Spirit of God. Would you say a manifestation of the Spirit of God? Where one person spoke in tongues. Got it? And then somebody else interpreted what that person said. You got it? Now, I want to, again, emphasize to you, it's an interpretation, not a word-for-word -word translation. Okay? That's why when she prayed for quite a length in tongues, spoke at the leading of the Holy Spirit. And then the persons that spoke after her, they didn't have much to say, it seemed like. Well, because it's a gist of what was spoken in the Spirit. You got it? Amen? And so when you, when you, when you recognize that or you see that, understand something about that. This, that is, um, I don't want to get stuck. That's, that's a manifestation of the Spirit of God as He wills. You got me? So you can't just do that anytime you want to. It's a move of God's Spirit. It's a manifestation of God's Spirit on a person to do something at that particular time. You got me? Now, what we're going to talk about is totally different. Okay? We're going to talk about the mystery of speaking in other tongues and what it's about. Okay? And I'm going to show you some benefits from speaking with other tongues. And once you realize the benefits and the blessing of speaking in other tongues, you're going to want to do it all the time. Amen? Um, Isaiah 28. Look with me and begin with verse number 10. Amen. Okay, ninth verse. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. In other words, not babies. Okay? Y'all get that? Look at somebody said, not babies. There's a, there comes a point in your life where you're no longer a baby, okay, uh, in the things of God. Now, here's one of the things that I, 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 I declare that you shall say no more. Look at me. I declare that you shall say no more. I'm just a babe in Christ. <laughs> as long as you're a baby, you will never get the deep things of God. So as long as you confess you are just a baby, you will remain a baby, okay? And because you remain a baby, you won't get into the riches and the depth of the things that God has. Got it? Can y'all hear me? So then he goes on and he says, now watch this. This is the prophet Isaiah. He says, uh, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Now listen to this very closely. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. With what? With what? Stammering. With stammering lips. And what? And what? And other tongue shall he do what? This is Isaiah actually involved in the prophecy of prophetic voice concerning speaking with other tongues. You got it? Are you here? Now, I want you to go with me to the book of Acts. There's a book in your Bible called Acts. Amen. And I want you to look with me at chapter 1. You have it? But you shall receive power. What? You shall receive what? That he says, you sh but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is what? Is what? 
after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Notice when he said that you shall be filled with power. You shall receive power. Now watch what he said again. After. What? After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Is that right? And then he said, you shall be witnesses of me. Now notice what he did when he said this. He began at home, a little further out, a little further out, until he reached all the earth. So watch what I'm saying to you. Listen, what you have to recognize is God always wants you to start at home first. Because if you can't get this right, you're not going to be able to get the other parts right. You got me? But he said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost. Would you say after? So not before, but after. Is that right? Now watch this. And when he had spoken these things, while they were beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of, the, out of their sight. Right? So this was the ascension of Christ. This is when he left. You with me? Now, here's what I want you to understand. Is Christ spoke to his disciples in the book of Luke, the last chapter of the book of Luke, and he said, he blew on them and said, receive the Holy Ghost. That's what he said. Do what? So that means all that time that the disciples were working with Jesus, they were not filled with the Holy Ghost. They walked with Jesus, according to the scriptures, approximately three years. Now watch, listen to this. <laughs> But he gave them the power to do what they were doing. And they were not filled with the Holy Ghost. You got me? But now he told them, now I don't want you to leave here. I don't want you to go anywhere. You stay right here until you receive power. Watch this, from on high. Jesus said something very powerful too in, in the book of John. He said this, he said, um, he said I got to go. He said, I have to go back to my father because if I don't go, the comforter can't come. And he said, the comforter is the Holy Spirit. Now watch. So Jesus had to leave, hello, before the Holy Spirit could come back. Are you with me? So that's why when the disciples were gathered with him on that mount and he just ascended after he told them what he had to send, because now he had to go to his father. And he told the disciples, he said, now I'm going to send you another comforter. He said, what? He said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. In other words, Jesus, now, oh, Father, don't make me do all this stuff. Because see, when I get into this, I see so many things that I, you know, and, uh, and so it started, and then I, get, I can get, I can get, I can get, praise the Lord, I can get way over there. And so I, I have to try to keep myself focused on what I'm talking about. Because the Bible is just so wonderful. The Word is so awesome. Yes, it, is. It, 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 it has so much good stuff in it. It's it almost like you just want to eat off every plate at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You, you got 20 plates on the table, none of them for you, but you start eating in everybody's plate. Yes. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? So now watch. So he said, now, he said, I have to go to the Father for the Comforter to come back. Yes. Now, he says this, he said, I'm going to send you another comforter. Would you say another? another. So who must have been the other one? Huh? He was. he was the comforter. But he said, I'm going to send you back another comforter. Now watch what he said. You ready? Can y'all handle this? I'm not, uh, listen, if you got a wig on, you better hold it tight. <laughs> watch what he said listen what he said he said I'm going to send you another comforter you ready then he said I will come unto you yeah 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 I see that see ho 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 hey he said I'm going now listen what he said listen to this he says, I'm going to send you, the Father's going to send you another comforter. And he said, I'm going to come back unto you. Yes. 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 Yes.
Okay, let me help you. You ready? Are you ready? So he's saying, I'm going to go. The father's going to send back another comforter. I will come unto you. In other words, I'm done in this body right now. There's going to be exchange. I'm coming back as the Holy Spirit. <laughs> can can y'all hear that? So so watch what he's saying. He said, "I ain't going nowhere to stay. I'm coming back." But now I'm coming back, watch this, as spirit, not as flesh. As flesh man, he was limited in his scope where he could be. But coming back as spirit, it was limitless where he could be. So I submit to you that the Holy Ghost is Jesus in another form. Now you say, why are you telling me all this? Because the better you understand the things of God, the better you'll be able to live. The better you understand a relationship, the better you'll be able to walk in it. Are you hear what I'm saying? So now, now watch, watch what I'm saying to you. So he said, I'm coming back. He said, now, I was walking with you. I'm going to be in you. So watch this. So that's life. why the Holy Ghost is called the Spirit it of Christ. Because of Hello. Can you hear me? So he's in you now versus being outside of you. And so being in you gives you the power to do the works that he did. Because listen, he in you doing what he was doing. Y'all better hear what I'm saying? Now, so what is the reason that the Holy Ghost would come back for? Why would the Holy Ghost come and be in men? I'm glad you asked. So that you would have the power to do and live the life that God intended for you to do and live. Jesus said something in the book of Acts, the first chapter, remember? He said, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So what he's saying is this, you can't have the power without the Spirit. So why would the Holy Ghost come back? Why would the Holy Ghost come and enter you so you can have the power? Let me, let, me, let me say it like this to you. Y'all love me? Look at me and say, Pastor, we love you. Apostle, we love you. Whatever you is, we love you. Listen to this. You ready? I said, are you ready? Too many believers are without that power. And your number one stumbling block that the enemy put up in you with you is speak with tongues. Because people tell you, the church, a lot of churches tell you, a lot of church folk, a lot of pastors will tell you, that's done away with, that's gone, that's, that's not for today. Well, the Bible says, Jesus says something very powerful. He said the Holy Ghost is for you and them that are afar off. Huh? All that shall come. So that means the Holy Ghost is for everybody that lives. Now, if you did, what can I say? Might not benefit you. But it's for all of us. That's why in heaven you see no instruction, or you see no direction, no mentioning of section one and section two. Section one is for the tongue talkers. 
And section two is for the other believers. You don't, you don't see that. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came and he set apart each and every one of them that were gathered in the room. Everybody. And they all spoke with tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. All of them spoke with tongues. So that is the president that when the Holy Ghost comes, everybody receives from him. Can you hear me? Y'all hear? All right. So in the book of Acts again, he says that uh, you'll be witness of me. Now, remember that word? Say witness. Say it again. In other words, you have the power now to demonstrate what I speak. The things I have taught you, you now have the ability to demonstrate it. Before, you couldn't demonstrate this. See, what we, we, we get it, we, in, our, in, our, in our natural thinking, we think when you say a witness, it's something I saw. But in this witness is a demonstration. In other words, you are the one that others will witness doing what God said. <laughs> okay. Look, look at, look, look, don't even look at nobody. Just, just put your hand right here. And say, health, health. spring forth. Spring forth. I, am I am a witness, a, witness. a, demonstration, a demonstration of the Holy Ghost. You get the point? So watch this. So my body, my life ought to be a witness, ought to be a testimony to others. I'm healthy. Because God said I'm healthy. I'm healed by his stripes. In other words, what Jesus said, I become a witness of. We settle too much. And I'm going to tell you one of the reasons why we stay sick. You see it. Just a minute. Okay? Y'all give me a minute. Because we don't use the power that we have. Amen. Amen. We don't use the power that we have. Because some of us don't even believe we speak in the God. Amen. But I got news for everybody. You have to believe in the one that you say you believe in. And you have to believe the things that he said in order to see what he said come to pass. That's why Jesus said something very powerful to the man uh, that his daughter had died. Well, his daughter was sick and then the people come and they say, she died, ain't only you mess with, the, mess with the master no more. And when Jesus heard what they said, the first thing he said to that man was only believe. Only believe what? What I told you. He said, I will come and heal her. That's what I'm going to do. So all the other voices that's coming at you, all the other stuff that's being said to you, let that go. Only believe what I told you. If he said, I will, he will. Is anybody here? Now, let's talk about this tone thing a little bit. Praying in tongues is speaking divine mysteries. It's speaking what? Divine. divine mysteries. Things that are not known, things that are concealed, things that are hidden. You got me? It's divine mysteries. Look at 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 14. You have it? 1 Corinthians chapter 14. It says in the second verse, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God, how be it in the spirit he speaketh what? Mystery. He speaks what? Mystery. But he's not talking to men. When you pray in tongue, you speak another tongue, you're not talking to men. You're speaking to God. And when you speak to God, what you're doing is you're praying mysteries. Things that no other people know about. No thing that nobody else know what you're saying is between you and God. 
And that's one of the things that the wicked one try to use against you is to try to tell you, you speaking in a tongue, don't nobody know what you're talking about. And it ain't for you to know what I'm talking about. I ain't talking to you. Can you hear me? That's like, that's like, that's like, like Pastor Glover, Glover talking to his wife. And you sitting over there trying to hear what he's saying. You, know, you got your lean on. And, he, and then you ask him, say, what you say to her? Ain't your opinion what he said. He wasn't talking to you. You get the point? So now watch. So, so he, says, he says that you are not speaking to men, you're speaking unto God. But he said, you are speaking mysteries. Mysteries are things that are hidden from those that don't know God. Some things you don't know. So he gives you the Holy Spirit so that you can speak in tongues and then you speak those things and you're speaking the perfect will of God. I said you're speaking the perfect will of God when you pray in other tongues. Because your spirit is praying with the help of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit knows the deep things of God. So when you are praying in the spirit with his help, how can you miss? Anybody here? So what happens to us, saints, listen to what I'm saying to you. What happens to us is we get out of ourselves and we get into the spirit that God has made us to be. And that spirit is a part of us that actually hooks up with God. First Corinthians chapter two, verse 14, I believe it is, says that uh, the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God because they are foolishes unto him. He said, matter of fact, he said, neither can he know them for their foolishes unto him. So he said, the natural man can't receive what God is saying. That's why you try to tell people the things of God that don't know God, and they think you're crazy. Hello. So the first thing you need to get this person done is to get them to receive Christ. So they open their understanding can be opened. Amen. So you won't just be wasting words. Because when you, when, oh Jesus. Can I say it like I want to say it? Can I say it like I want to say it, brother? I can say it like I want to say it. See, you run into knuckleheads. You run the hard-headed folk that ain't gonna hear nothing until the Holy Ghost break them down. Amen. Don't frown at me like that. <laughs> but the thing is, is that until the Spirit works on your heart, gets you to change, you can't hear what God is saying. And that's why you question everything. Because you're trying it with your head. God is not understood with the head. God is understood with your spirit. You renew your mind. Listen to what I'm saying. You renew your mind to the word so the word can have an effect on your heart, on your spirit, and it has an effect on your conduct. But the spirit is for demonstration. The spirit is for living. The spirit is for life. The spirit is, is power. That's why when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you speak in mysteries unto God. And when he begins to do, watch this, he begins to open up things to you. I remember one time I had to drive all the way from here to, what was it, to um, Port Arthur? Just to go and minister to a person? Was it Port Arthur or Beaumont? Beaumont. Anyway, I had to go a long way. And so the person, they were having problems. And so I didn't know what to do. So let me tell you what I did. I prayed in the Holy Ghost the whole way. Right. When I got there, I had every answer. Now, he didn't tell me, say this and say that, and say that and say this. He didn't, no, no, no. When I spoke and they began to speak back to me, the things, the answers began to flow up out of me. Right. It wasn't he gave me no premeditated word to say. Right. 
I told you guys before, I said, I, I, this guy I used to work with when I used to work at Exxon, he told me his house seemed like it was uh, haunted. <laughs> he said, um, it's like it'd be cold in there, it's like some kind of spirit up in there. He said, would you come? <laughs> I want to say, is you crazy? <laughs> I was just, I was really a rookie back then too, you know. And uh, so I'm thinking, this man want me to come out here and do this at his house. So I began praying the Holy Ghost. I said, I'll come. So I prayed in the Holy Spirit. I walked in that house and he wasn't lying. Amen. It was a chill up in there. I mean, to the bone. In my mind, my mind said, you better get up out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but I had prayed in the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost fortified me. Yeah. And I just spoke the word in the house. I cast you out. Yeah. And the whole atmosphere changed. It was because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. It was because I prayed in tongues. Now I could have went in there with my head and been like them seven sons of Sceva. Hmm? Well, they could have run me out of there. Well, they'll say to you, they, they, them seven sons of they come in to try and do what Paul did. And, and uh, yeah, we can do this like Paul did. Paul cast my, let's go do that too. <laughs> Boys ain't had nothing. Seven of them. Them demons run them off. Whoop them up and run them off. You can't do this stuff in your flesh. Them demons say, them demons say, wait a minute, hold tight, hold tight. The demons say, look here. Jesus we know. So Paul we know. Well, who are you? <laughs> huh? I mean, that's the word. The demon want to know, who are you? You ain't got no power. What you going to do with us? Whoop that hiney. And run them off. You can't do this in your flesh. Now, when you pray in tongues, the second chapter again says, For he that speaketh an unknown tongue speaketh unto men, not unto men, but unto who? And so it says again that you speak in mysteries. Is that right? So now watch this. That's your, that's, you, know, uh, you know that song we used to sing in the traditional church? Jesus on the main line? Tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, look at y'all. Look at y'all. Look at y'all. Yeah, so see how, see how, see how easy it is for y'all to go back. <laughs> look at that. They're quiet music ministry. <laughs> now, we ain't singing that in the music ministry, huh? <laughs> so now. So, but, but the thing is, is that it's a direct line when you pray in the stone. You, it's a direct line to God. Yeah. Amen. I got time to show you a couple other things. Oh, Father, I need some time to work on this one. When you pray in tongues, you actually are prophesying your future. When you speak in tongues, you're actually prophesying your future. You are speaking things spiritually in the spirit that's going to open up natural things for you to go forward. In other words, speaking in tongues pull you out of your past and takes you to your future. Say it again, Apostle. All right, all right, all right, all right. That's what it does. Apostle Paul said this. He said, I, I thank my God. I pray in tongues more than all y'all. And you see what Apostle Paul did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Apostle Paul is the one responsible for uh, writing most of the New Testament. Yeah. <clears throat> Can I tell you a secret? Y'all want to hear a secret? Yeah. You really want to hear a secret? <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Old Testament books. They're not New Testament. That's right. 
they are put in the New Testament, but everything that happened was Old Covenant. The new did not kick in until Jesus went to Calvary's cross. When he died on Calvary and was risen again, that began the new. The scriptures in the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were describing his life as he walked the earth under the old covenant. That's why he kept the law. That's why he went to the synagogues. So now you think about this. All the things Jesus did in the, in, in, in the Gospels were Old Covenant. You know what he said about us in Hebrews? He said, you have a better covenant now. So if we have a better, why do, we, why do you think we have a better? Because the promises are better. <laughs> Hallelujah. The empowerment is better. You have power now, whereas no, you didn't have any. See, the Holy Spirit would come upon uh, prophets of old, come upon them, but they didn't ever go in them, be in them. And that's why they did the miracles the things they did then, but it was because the Holy Spirit would come upon them. But you have him in you. Anybody here? All right, so you speak in your own future because the tongues you speak in the mysteries of God, you open up things for God to present you and cause you to go forth in. Okay. Paul said that when, you, we, we, when we speak, we speak wisdom of God in a mystery. Wait a minute. He says we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. That's 1 Corinthians 2 and 7. He said, we speak the mysteries of God, wisdom of God in a mystery. Wait a minute, what did I say? Which way I say? The wisdom of God in a mystery? Just seeing if y'all paying attention, I know what I said. So now watch. He said, you speak in what? In what? In mysteries. So how do you speak mysteries? In tongues. So you speak in God's wisdom when you pray in tongues. Not when you pray at your understanding. I'm trying to give you a secret into the power of God. I'm trying to give you a secret into the mega lifestyle that God wants you to live. I'm trying to show you how to enter in from being just mundane, regular life into the life that God wants you to live. Can y'all hear me? I don't know why this thing coming up my ear so much today. I guess my ears didn't grew or something. So I got to lose weight because my face is getting fatter. I got, I got hats I can't even put on. They sit up here like that now. <laughs> so I, I was thinking I need to go get me some more hats. So now I'm losing this weight. Anyway. Can I, can I, get, can I get five minutes? Now, don't, now, y'all know when a preacher say five minutes, you know what that means. <laughs> All right, listen to this real quick. Okay? Ephesians 3.16 says that you're strengthened with his might, with might by his spirit. Look at that with me, please. Let's go there. Ephesians chapter 3, because I, I got to show you something here. Gosta. Ephesians chapter 3. You have it? Okay. I want you to look with me at verse 14. You ready? For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to his riches of his glory, to be strengthened with his might, by his spirit in the inner man. Mm-hmm. That's it. The Holy Ghost strengthens you. When you pray in tongues, you're strengthened. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Now watch what he says. I want, you to, I want you to home in on something. 
He says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. You got it? Listen, to be strengthened, what? With might by his spirit in the inner man. By his spirit. You strengthen with might. Might. Say might. You strengthen with might. Watch what he says in the inner man. Might in the inner man on, inside of you. That might, watch this, you ready? Yeah. It means power. Yeah, it does. power the ability to, to do. Yeah. You with me? So now watch this. It's by his spirit. And that, that, that caught my attention when he said by his spirit. Okay? Not by mine, but by his. I am strengthened with might by his spirit. I am given dunamis power. I'm given the power, watch this, to tread on wicked one, tread on the enemy, to cast out devils. Come on, y'all. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, so he gives you the might. He gives you the ability to do things, praise God, that you couldn't do naturally. To know things that you didn't know without help by the spirit. To see things that you couldn't see. He gives you the power. He strengthens you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He strengthens you. Look at somebody tell, you, tell him he strengthens you. Now, would you do this with me? Close your Bible. You can put your Bible on. I'm done. I want you to do something with me. Will you do this with me? Place your hands on your chest. Just place your hands there. And say, Father, Father thank, you thank you for strengthening me, strengthening me in the inner man, in the inner man by, your by your spirit. Thank you, thank you for strengthening me strengthening in my inner man, my inner man by, your by your spirit. I thank you. I, thank you. I have the power, have the power to, do to do the things, the things Jesus, said Jesus said I would do. Jesus said, Jesus said the works that he did I would do also. I would do also. Thank, you Thank you for the power, for the power to, do it. to do it. Now lift your hands and give him thanks if you believe that. <laughs>